Bonjour. Ciao che ho voi ci check in in addition to us. Gaga, ciao buon mi fessi che non tutti. My name is Strong Standing Spirit Man. My clans are the Raven and the Bald Eagle. And the name my beautiful mother gave me is Cory. I work with uh, Nichiwam Incorporated, a child and youth care uh, organization providing services to children and youth in child and family services care. Well, of course, first and foremost, it's, it's about care. Um, it's about residential care, so um, having a safe place to sleep, eat, and, and, uh, and live. Um, but um, that, that being said, it's, uh, there, there's so much more that goes into care. And uh, one of the pieces of our, of our care is to help young people uh, come to understand themselves as a people so that they can better understand themselves as a person. Um, learning object, uh, objectives are very, very broad, um, but uh, of course it's your general, learn how to wash your clothes, learn how to cook your food, learn how to clean your house and, and, and things like that. But uh, more importantly, it's also to learn how to navigate life as a, as a visible or, or not quite visible uh, indigenous person um, and you know, venturing into society and, and how to be successful despite uh, being marginalized and despite coming up coming upon various forms of, of uh, uh, racism and, and, and other things that you know don't don't contribute to making life easy uh, and so that that's our, our our primary uh, goal is, is to be able to help them help them do that in a way that um, empowers them, but also um, affords them the opportunity to empower others as well. It's indigenous based, indigenous delivered, uh, indigenous uh, you know from an indigenous lens. Uh, because, for instance, I mean, uh, just the relations, interpersonal relations. Um, you know, helping us understand why some of our young people look at the floor when you're talking to them, uh, helping helping each other understand why, um, you know, one person will say, well, you know, if you're going to shake somebody's hand, you it's a nice firm handshake versus a gentle handshake, and you know, and, and not uh, not expressing power or, or other things. So, um, certainly helping them identify cultural dif differences in terms of where they come from and, and where they live. Um, because again, as a, uh, from a Western society, there's very different ways in which we engage each other inter interpersonally. Um, uh, in, in terms of you know, the other things is, again, helping them to connect with their identity of who they are as a people, um, be it, you know, Anishinaabe, Inanu, Dakota, Dene, um, Oji Cree. Uh, there's, there, uh, you know, uh, the distinctions that we have and go beyond just the simple, an Indian is not an Indian is not an Indian. And, and we have, um, or an indigenous person is not just simply, and unfortunately, indigenous is, you know, a very broad, Brush to paint with um, when we when we think about uh, the distinctions between our communities, and of course, you know, it's, it's a whole lot easier to say indigenous than than to to investigate where, in fact, this you know these you know a person comes from to be able to um, to acknowledge that part of them. Um, so again, in terms of the education, it's not a it's, it's not a structured around being education it's structured around um, experiencing life and and these are different ways that you you may experience that life well I think one of the one of the ways that we measure our outcomes of course is when we're able to uh, tangibly witness attitude changes um, and sadly uh, really sadly the attitude towards themselves when that attitude towards themselves changes, um, that is definitely one of our, our, our measurable outcomes. Um, although it's it's anecdotal because we're we're, we're simply documenting what we observe. Um, but I know uh, for uh, 
with a considerable amount of consistency. I can ask a young person in, in one of our programs, um, are you proud to be Indigenous? And they'll say, yeah. And sometimes they'll say no. Um, but if, for the ones that say, yep, I can, I'll ask them why. Uh, I don't know. They don't really have an answer to that. Some do. It's much, 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 much more. Um, certainly a, a heck of a lot more than when I was, you know, a teenager. Um, but to be able to then instill that that pride and instill those those uh, you know th those pieces of themselves um, that they are able to express and carry forward. Um, some of the stuff that we do, mostly land based, mostly cultural, spiritual based. But one of the things, like for instance, you know, with our with our sweat lodge, we talk about a circle. Well, a circle is three hundred and sixty degrees. That is math language. That's something that well, you know, that they can then incorporate into their when they're taking geom geometry in you know in math class. Um, when we talk about uh, our sacred fire, you know, four hundred and fifty four degrees Fahrenheit is what. I don't know what the conversion is to Celsius. I remember the book, um, but the, the wood burns at a certain temperature. So being able to talk to them about the fire triangle and, and about, you know, what is required in order for us to actually have that sacred fire um, and to, you know, so that it is translatable in, in, in ways. That's our goal for sure. Um, and then j just to be able to, again, talk to, talk to them about, um, you know, where, where they're at, where they want to be and how they're going to get there. Um, and to be able to incorporate, um, you know, our you know, indigenous values, you know, around that. And of course, it, very generic here, very broad, uh, well, or narrow, because of course my teachings come from a specific area and region within Manitoba. Um, for the other, um, you know, employees that we have that are more of a cultural or spiritual focus, um, they too have, you know, similar and different um, regions and teachings and gifts that they bring. And so one of my responsibilities as executive director is to to identify, to help identify, A, a the kind, soft, gentle uh, approaches that, that can be taken and uh, and how to safely, uh, you know, administer those so that, uh, our, you know, to help our young people connect with uh, who they are as a people. A very broad definition, but again, it's from from the people to the people. Um, and when I say from the people, it's it's from that indigenous lens, and 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 uh, um, not not just consultation, but to to actually incorporate what is being said. Um, you know, tr traditional land knowledge. Um, you know, we we didn't camp here because every once in a while the creeks would rise and you know we'd get wet. Um, you know, uh, so or we didn't camp here because it was too far from where the herds were in terms of the deer or any of the other animals that we may have been hunting. Um, doesn't have a whole lot of real world right now um, benefit necessarily, but for a young person to be able to then navigate, you know, time in the bush and, and do so safely. Um, that, you know, because that is, uh, I'm a city kid. I was born and raised in the North End here. And uh, my first time in the forest, I twisted my ankle and banged my head against a tree branch. Um, <laughs> and, it, you know, if I didn't have somebody with me, it could have it could have worked out pretty pretty harsh. Yeah, I'm getting better at it. I am I am getting better at it. I spend a lot of time in the bush now, so I live in the country now. So, um, but it, it, it and and that's another thing too because so many of our young people, their earliest memories may be the bush, but because of the way this you know the way the system is set up, the way it works, the lack of resources in the north. Many of our children are coming from the north. Um, because of the lack of resources that are up there, they're forced to come down here and become urbanized. And so, yeah, their very earliest memories may be rural and, and, and in the bush, in, in the medicines and, and that. And, uh, you know, to help them restore that and to help them reconnect with that is, I think, those, one of the ways that um, we're able to um, realize success when we, when we have our... Uh, um, 
when we're assessing, you know, how we're doing with uh, with the uh, programming that we're that we're providing. I wouldn't, you know, say outright indigen indigenous education. Um, I mean, I use the word just simply because it is certainly the acceptable way uh, and politically correct now. Um, but uh, I mean, with my friends, I'll use Nden. <laughs> NDN is. Um, you know, ingenuity, you know, the engine who knew it. Um, but all of that, all of that kidding aside, um, it, the, the idea that uh, traditional knowledge and traditional um, to, to a region, to a people, and, and, and to, um, to history. Uh, because even our own, you know, in, in terms of indigenous knowledge has evolved and indigenous knowledge has um, adapted and indigenous knowledge has changed in, in many ways. Um, but uh, but I, it, for certainly for the purposes of promotion, I'll, you know, absolutely I'll use those catchphrases. Um, but really, what we're what we're trying to do is is, is just being able to provide a, uh, our young people with a with a leg up and an opportunity to be able to get ahead, one ahead of the the person next to them, um, even if it means surprising somebody who you know may be ignorant or out out and out you know ugly, um, but you know to be able to um, surprise somebody with. Uh, you hear stories about uh, you know, somebody recognizes you as an indigenous. I have one personally. I worked uh, con construction and landscaping company. Uh, my boss had no idea that uh, that I was indigenous. He thought I was, he assumed based on my appearance that I was Portuguese or Spanish or Italian. Um, and with the last name like Campbell, it, you know, it uh, um, may not have fit, but uh, but it, still, he didn't assume indigenous heritage. As soon as he found out about it, he said, if I'd known that, I wouldn't have hired you. He said, but you surprised me because, you know, here you are, one, you know, one of the harder working guys on the team. Um, and needless to say, I didn't react very well to it. and was very rude and obnoxious about it. Um, but to be able to come across somebody with an ugly attitude like that, based on either just you know meanness or, or ignorance, and to be able to provide them with the uh, knowledge and education around uh, no, there's you know there is there's a different view, and um, they may uh, they may gel and they may conflict, but uh, but there's a different there's a different side to to our stories. And that's that's our, our, our um, one of our goals in, in terms of being able to provide a young person with a a, a better grasp of of, uh, of how they can present themselves in 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 the world you know broader world. There is a distinction. I I, I, I believe that there is a distinction, but mostly that belief comes from the novelty of the idea of indigenous education it's not a it's not a very old concept certainly not in, in accepted terms being accepted um it of course it is an ancient concept uh, the, you know the way that we interact with each other in the land and, and the environment is is indigenous knowledge and of course that comes you know farming here in canada those skill sets were developed across the ocean in, in many aspects, of course, many of the First Nations people had their form of agriculture and their form of farming. But you know, some of the other um, gifts that were that were brought forward uh, from from Europe and, uh, and other other countries through that uh, you know colonial process. Um, but those original ideas come from um, an indigenous level of knowledge. In Ireland, you had the Celts, and um, you know, in uh, the Netherlands, or maybe it, um, uh, the Samis and the Steps, and, and you know, so there is indigenous, there is indigenous knowledge, you know, even going back to Great Britain, uh, you know, a thousand years ago, um, there was indigenous indigeneity um, within all of all the regions of the world. 
Um, and then, of course, through assimilation and colonialism, as you know, people were able to further their movement, um, that gets that gets lost. But it's it's still there and it still exists. I don't know if I'm exactly answering the the, the question uh, outright, but um, but in term in terms of indigenous. Education it needs to come from the people and it needs to come from um, the knowledge keepers and it needs to come from people who have had um, a focus on on learning and developing and, and you know, being able to express what and transfer what they've learned. Um, recently, well, not re very recently, but. Uh, for instance, in our field, um, the idea that uh, an indigenous knowledge keeper um, is thought of, a, a not thought of as a professional. Um, for instance, you know, I, the work that I've done in the community, uh, in community organizations around spirituality and around singing and the drum and and other teachings, you know, in terms of what what helps a, a, a person connect with their identity. Um, you know, discussion about being uh, a support worker versus a clinician. And, you know, so when I was, you know, in the argument, I was asked, well, what do you think you should make? And I said, well, I think, I, what do you pay your clinicians? And they, well, well Corey, that's, you know, they got, you know, they got degrees. And I said, oh, degrees, eh? So degrees are based on credit hours? And yep. <laughs> so I go to a ceremony at least once a week for eight hours a eight hours a, a day. So what's eight times fifty two times twenty years? Because there's eight you know eight hours in my ceremony and fifty two weeks in the year and twenty years. You know how many credit hours is that? So I got the clinician rate, and it, you know it was a it, you know tongue in cheek, and 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 I'm being somewhat facetious, but it was that was an actual conversation. And, and that was what I had, um, you know, again, brought to because a clinician or, you know, uh, people that have those, um, you know, higher levels of education in the Western side, they bring a specialty. And it's based on their, you know, the time that they've spent learning, uh, be it reading or through practice or, or other things. And, of course, so do our knowledge keepers, so do our elders, so do our... Um, you know, our spiritual uh, care, you know, people are our spiritual leaders, um, sweat lodge keepers, pipe carriers, drum carriers, Sundance keepers, Sundance participants, uh, you know, and that's just, that's just the, the uh, spiritual aspect of that, um, you know, in terms of, uh, you know, our ceremonial aspect of that. But uh, even, uh, like I said, even within a, uh, a ceremonial spiritual context, you can be able to provide education or, or knowledge or information that, uh, that can help a young person translate that into which way I'm going to go um, for my career, which way I'm going to go in terms of uh, housing, which way I'm going to go in terms of the, the person I want to spend the rest of my life with. Absolutely needs to be expanded. It needs to be explored. It needs to be broadened, and it needs to be um, it needs to be incorporated into much more of our um, of our little systems. And again, keeping in mind, um, I said earlier that indigenous knowledge is is a new uh, kind of new in terms of acceptance and in terms of. Uh, um, you're hearing about it more and more often, um, but it, 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 you know, in ten years, it is absolutely my hope that um, the the amount of information that comes from an indigenous land is increasing. Like twenty years ago, in the you know public school system, there was no, with the exception of one or two schools, there was really no consideration for indigenous knowledge. Um, Eight years ago, I participated in the very first smudge ceremony at a, at a high school in St. James School Division, the very first time. Um, and now the St. James School Division is very progressive and very forward thinking. Um, you want to talk about education, uh, uh, contact Henrietta Hawk.
I, I, I keep messing up her last name. She's a principal at Buchanan Elementary School. And, you know, some of the work that they've done around, um, you know, utilizing their AAA dollars, the Aboriginal academic achievement dollars that they get, the, the, the extra money they get when a child declares their Indigenous heritage. Um, they do so much really tangible, positive work with that money. A um, couple of examples are uh, making hand drums, and but uh, you know, making hand drums not in a completely traditional sense where they were using deer hide or other things. You know, they they adapted. Uh, it was much cheaper to buy a whole bunch of goat hide than it was to buy, you know, a limited amount of deer hide. Um, and in so doing, they were able to make drums for every single student in school that they took home. Um, and then, of course, the, uh, you know, through the course of that was talking about the spirit of that hide, the spirit of the animal that created the hide, the spirit of the, uh, of the tree, the wood that, you know, that um, makes the hoop and the, the, the marrying of those two spirits to create a new spirit in terms of that drum and that drum having a voice. That is some of the work that um, they didn't have. The, uh, they didn't have any knowledge keepers around that, so they they, they, they sought out, and I, I, I happened to be you know the one that they, that they connected with. But the the absolute uh, genuine um, interest in learning about it and, and and sharing it and and making it a requirement of their of their curriculum. Truly, truly impressive. At this age of social media, and then uh, you know, you look at all the craziness that's going down in the states, and how that's you know that's kind of amplifying or echoing um, you know up here in Canada, and uh, you know all political, all politics, and, and garbage, and that stuff aside. Um, but you know, within the last year, we've you know we've heard horror stories coming out of the relationship between First Nations people and and settlers or you know um, colonizers or you know but the, the non-indigenous people that are in conflict in Saskatchewan, for instance, with the Colton Bushy being killed. Um, you look at the lack of perceived empathy and, and well, perceived that I mean I, I truly believe it exists but the lack of empathy and care with, that the justice system and police have with um, indigenous people in, in, in terms of uh, um, the lack of resources that they have to be able to deal with somebody over and over and over and over again and then, and to be able to provide that serve and protect mentality. Um, even in our schools, uh, children in care, our population of young people, um, you know, they're further mar marginalized frequently because the school system um, not having their own resources, you know, putting up roadblocks to a young person's education. Uh, you know, we have acting out young people um, who then their education plan at school changes so that they're doing an hour and afternoon. Um, I can think of probably eight or nine times that that's happened in the last five years where we have a young person who's only school because of course the, the, edu the system must provide education to them. That's, that's the law. But they're getting an hour. They go sit in a classroom and, and how much how much they're getting, uh, how much instruction they're getting, how much knowledge they're incorporating, and and you know, granted that they don't want. I didn't want to be in school when I was there. Um, you know, the young person that you know that I'm talking about doesn't want to be in school. But what are you giving them? Um, are you know are are we are we even meeting standards, or is just just meeting our standards our goal? Um, you know, or, or do we want to over you know? surpass what the standards say that we must get you know can we can we enhance the standards can we go above and beyond um, and I and I, I, I believe that the, the the other thing that's really important to to what I believe that the indigenous knowledge coupled with the Western knowledge that's twice as much information that 
our young people can take with them as they, as they move forward and become better and, and to improve society. Funding, and I know, I know it says in the preamble, <laughs> except for funding. Um, but I, I think that uh, um, an acknowledgement that, you know, as I was talking about earlier, an acknowledgement that a, a traditional knowledge keeper is bringing a specialty to, um, to the work that you're trying to do. Um, so and compensating them appropriately, um, an acknowledgement that um, an oral tradition um, has as much value as as a written tradition or an oral history has as much value as one that is in writing. Um, you know, and of course, because the 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 a consistent argument that I've, that I've heard in the past was that. Um, an oral history is open to interpretation and can be altered so frequently. But history is written history is is just is just a, another example of this happened in 1600 and it changed to this in 1680 and then it changed to this in 1735 and you know so even written history shows evolutionary change or, or, or revolutionary change, but it shows change. So does our oral histories because, uh, you know, technology or uh, contact or, um, you know, uh, cataclysms. You know, if there was a particularly really, really hard winter, that means history, our oral history is going to change as a result of, uh, of those experiences and how we're able to, to navigate those experiences. And so that's, that's, that's part of it. Uh, the, uh, you know, um, and again, it's, it, 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 I can't express it enough that it needs to be promoted and it needs to be uh, acknowledged and it needs to be accepted. That, uh, I think that Particularly for you know, in my stream of uh, of, of, of work with uh, children in care of CFS, we're hugely overrepresented. Uh, you know, ninety percent of eighty eighty eight percent of the kids in care are Indigenous, and Manitoba has per capita the most kids in care. Um, so what what damage are we doing? What history are we repeating? What um, significant impact are we going to have on the next four generations, or the next seven generations. One of the things that I uh, that we at Nichuam um, promote and and nurture and and um, foster is that idea that you know, in terms of a community raising a child, it takes a community to raise a child. We hear that as a as a as a metaphor or a catchphrase or. Um, that, but and, and that's something that we, 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 we take to heart and we take that next step um, and, and in terms of um, our staff, our professional, I don't know, our treatment philosophy, we're a professionally staffed community-based organization. Um, we're a professionally staffed organization, but we take that to an, a, a different place and, and also acknowledge our humanity and our relation. Um, so that, because we, we, we become aunties and uncles. That's one of the things I tell all of our, all of our um, new applicants. You are not their mom and dad. You will never be their mom or dad. Uh, but you certainly can be their uncle or their auntie. And that's one of the things that I tell the kids, too, is, no, I'm not going to be your dad. I can't be your dad, but I could be your uncle. And, you know, do you want me to be the crazy uncle that, you know, has lots of fun? Or do you want me to be the crazy uncle that nobody wants to come to the barbecue, right? Um, but that, that idea that, that connecting via that relationship um, is... Is another thing that is that is vital to education of any kind. A relationship needs to exist. So foster a positive relationship, and then I believe you foster a stronger education.